it's Tozer. At least I think it is. <laughs> Could be. Might be. Looks like it. But then again, it just might be God speaking to you. And he might be speaking to me. I think that's kind of the exciting thing there is in having emotionals and devotional time to turn our attention away from all that we think we ought to do to someone who knows what we should do. Now, God will never make you do anything you don't want to do, although he may change your attitude and cause you to do that which you should do. But the preferential way is to seek his face, to hear his voice, to walk with him each day, and to learn to choose to set aside some time to hear what God might say. It just might save your life one day. <laughs> and that's for sure. It definitely will make your life easier. Although, it, just, it could just as easily make it harder. Because being a Christian isn't easy. Sometimes it's tough. It requires you to grow up, to make tough choices. Because anyone can have a Christian religion. But... Not everyone has a relationship with Jesus. And a lot of people know him as Savior, but not everyone knows him as Lord. The profane man, he rules out God completely. And I will say to my soul, Soul, O oh soul, <laughs> thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Luke 12:19. The profane man in today's profane generation has come to the conclusion that he alone is important in this universe. Thus he becomes his own God. He dotes on things, secular things, until he mistakenly assumes that there is nothing in the universe but material and physical values. It is sad but true that a great and eternal woe awaits the profane and completely secular man whose only religion is in the thought that he probably is not as bad as some other man. I think that there is an Old Testament portion in the book of Job that fits modern profane man very well. Woe is me that I was ever born, that my mother ever conceived me, that the stars of the twilight of the night be as darkness. Oh, that I might have been carried from my mother's knees to the grave, where the wicked cease from troubling and the toil-worn are dressed. Only the darkness of judgment remains for the self-sufficient and completely secularized man who has ruled out God out of his life and out of his business and out of his home and out of his world. I am thinking particularly of those who give lip service to the church and in some mental assent to religion, but who have forgotten that they were created, that they have a responsibility to God, that they have ignored Jesus Christ ignored his presence, ignored his voice, ignored his light, and consistently ignored his word. Ouch! <laughs> I don't know what's gotten into toes in the last few days, but wow! How sad it is to think of those people who, I know there's probably more people that think there are more unrighteous people than there are. But Tozer was describing a completely secularized person, not the person that you might be thinking is going to hell because you don't like them or something, but someone who really is all about me, you know, kind of like the motivational speakers, you know, about how you can network for yourself to make your business succeed and how you can succeed and be the person you want to be that you were intended to find yourself and discover that you are the most important person that you can be. And we can inspire you to find out that true inner being that you are that you can become, you know. And I listen to all those hype statements and motivational speakers and, you know, it works. You will accomplish becoming your own God. You will feel good about yourself. You will have all these positive aspects. 
and God will leave you to your own end until you die. And in the moment of your death, you'll realize you made the wrong choice. It's not about you. Oh, sure, God loves you. Yes, Jesus died on the cross for your salvation. He opened the door for your relationship to be established with God, but not so you could go about your own thing and do your own will and have your own way. He opened the door of communication so that you could discover that though your sins are forgiven you, your relationship is not assured. You need to establish that personal relationship with God. Because yes, Jesus paid the price for your sins. So, you're forgiven. But when Jesus comes to judge, and he says, depart from me, I never knew you. That's the criteria with which we need to establish whether or not we have a relationship with religion, with ourselves, with our idealism, or with the very real and present personal God who wants to remind you that you are a sinner saved by grace and that it was a gift freely from Him and that we need to be thankful, mindful, worshipful and in connection, in communication with Him talking one to one. It's a horrible thought that anyone should go to hell but it is a reality. It's a devastating fact that we could prevent it if we live up to what we say we believe in and we don't promote a religion that's based on works but we exercise a relationship that demonstrates the power of God not just by gifts of the Spirit but by the reality of love the manifestation of peace the abundance of joy in the midst of the trials and tribulations that you see all around you today right now in your world and in your circumstances because the ungodly are watching you. Are you going to blame it on them? Are you going to say that everything needs to be a religious way? Or are you just simply going to turn to God and say, Thy will be done and be at peace with it? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not trying to change Nebuchadnezzar's world. As a matter of fact, they lived in it. Daniel was not trying to revitalize the Babylonian Empire. He lived in it. All they were doing was exercising their faith and enjoying the freedom they had within the boundaries of the law that they lived in to be the men of God that they were. And you know what? Because Daniel was at peace in the lion's den, the lions didn't bother him. Because Shadrach, and Mesh Shadrach Meshach, and Abednego were at peace in the fire, it didn't touch them. When you are in the midst of your trials and you're at peace, the world is watching you. That's your gospel. It's not the words you say. It's the life you live. And it's not just by going to church, but it's by having that personal relationship that God tells you, here comes the trial, but I'll be with you because I am your Lord, your God, and I am your peace. Thank you.